Hey everybody, welcome back to T3T. This is Father Christian. This is Father Todd. And this week we're talking about a lot of things that are happening right now in the digital landscape here during this time of Corona. So stick around to hear the top three things you need to know this week at St. Mary's. Okay, Father Todd, it's been a little bit since you've been on the T3T to talk mm -hmm. about some top three things, so you must have some juicy stuff for us to share with, with the St. Marian community. Kristen, you will just... You will never believe how things have changed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. I think, what a shock. You know, it's <laughs> nice when you, you know, there's some other professions where they just have time off. I feel like I things have really ramped up more for... Uh, so, it's, so my daughter, when, when I told her that, uh, that the services weren't going to be offered here for a little bit, she said, vacation. And I said... I wish. Yeah. <laughs> There's a you know a pastoral need that naturally will arise during this time, and people's anxiety gets a little higher. And people you know no, no, normally you and I would just or someone from the caring team would go and visit someone and be with them. Uh, that really can't happen. So what are some for the first thing we need to know? Uh, what are some of the uh, new pastoral developments that are happening here at St. Mary's during this time? Well, Christian, you're right because for us, you know, we're kind of a high touch place. I think the church in general is a high touch place. And so for us not to be able to gather and not to be able to visit with each other, that's, it's, it's really counterintuitive for us. And so we do underscore the fact that we are spiritually united, we're spiritually bonded to each other, uh, but we still have to be able to use the technology and the things that are available to us to, to do what we can to increase our ability to, to, to be in touch, to, to be able to communicate and really be able to support each other. One of the things that, um, that we are making available is a new thing that we're calling the listening post. Mm. And that is, it's an opportunity for folks who may feel anxious or just want to be able to talk to a friendly uh, listening ear, to be able to know that there's somebody out there that cares for them, to be able to call in and, uh, and, and to know that there's somebody there to receive them. And so I've spoken to our Stephen Ministry folks, and so Cindy Eaton and John Lockwood have agreed to help coordinate uh, some Stephen Ministries who are making them ministers who are going to make themselves available. So these are not traditional Stephen Ministry caring relationships, but they but these are folks who have been trained in listening skills, and so they'll be great in being able to provide that kind of listening support to those folks. So it's called the Listening Post, and I'd invite you to if you're anxious or you feel like you just need somebody to talk to, uh, call you can call into the church office and uh, and we'll hook you up with uh, with either John or Cindy and make sure that there's somebody who's going to be available uh, there for you. If there are a lot of people and we can engage other people um, as good listeners, we've got lots of folks who have good listening skills mm -hmm. that we can mm -hmm. that we can put to put to use. So so we don't need people to just kind of be you know just kind of be walled off uh, during this time. It's you know a sense of isolation is just too easy for us and we struggle with that anyway. Um, now's the time for us to be able to say we need each other and not to feel embarrassed by being able to admit that to ourselves and to others. Just reach out. Uh, you don't have to be by yourself. The advantage that we have uh, at St. Mary's is having this trained Stephen Ministry team that also knows a lot about confidence and keeping confidence. Yep. So again, if, if you are someone who needs to right. have that help and have a listening ear, just know that the people who are lifted up for this understand completely that they keep uh, what happens between you and them and it does not go anywhere else so you can and you can trust that ear awesome so that's feeding the soul now we have some developments of folks out there who who might need some uh, some some other food as well like food food wow so, so how we feed how we feed in the stomachs here for the number two thing we need to know you know when I was a kid uh -huh. um, and I was just feeling kind of sicky or just kind of just kind of under the weather there was nothing better than my mom to make a big thing of chicken soup I mean it was just and that's why so you know, the, the whole series of books that was called chicken soup for the soul, soul right? Right, right, right just kind of helped you to feel good and just kind of this warm embrace that happens and uh, and so this is a great example of somebody you know at st. Mary's willing to kind of let their light shine and so John Norris has offered to to make his goal is uh, for now 500 quarts of <laughs> Of, of chicken soup that uh, that are available so they're in these in these handy bags they're frozen so they're easy to transport and so all you have to do is just call the church and we'll hook you up with John Norris in my letter that went out in fact his phone number is even there or you can email it if you've got a church director you know his email address and uh, and we'll fix you with uh, with some great chicken soup that will hopefully feed not only your body which we need 
um, but also a little bit of that emotional hug and some yeah. soul work here that'll that'll uh, help take the chill out of you know the times we find ourselves in. So Father Todd uh, Bishop Eden put out a, an email alluding to for us to maybe prepare for Easter in a digital landscape. Uh, so for for us, if we're leaning into this area of uh, of Easter that could potentially be digital, most likely. Um, how are we dealing with things like, uh, let's say, well, those wonderful flowers, right? Yeah. Like, and a lot of people want to memorialize lost ones, and this is a big time of the, of the year for us to, I know I like to put my stepfather there, buy some flowers and get his name in the worship yeah. guide. Uh, is, is it, will that still be happening? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So let me say a couple things about that, okay. about Easter. And one of the, so the likelihood is that all of Holy Week and Easter, um, we'll be doing digitally. So I want, I want to assure everybody we're going to do all of the services. We haven't canceled anything. We've just moved everything online. So there is this opportunity to be able to experience these very holy days in a, in a way that's different than anything mm. that we've experienced before. And also to guarantee, and so the bishop has, uh, has given his blessing to this, um, and it is that when we eventually get through this and we're able to actually worship together, our first worship service will be an Easter worship service. So if it's in June, July, whenever it is, it's going to be Easter. So we're going to come together, we're going to celebrate, and we'll have a great time. Including a vigil mass, too. Including a vigil. <laughs> yeah. so we'll, so, but you still have to sing the exultet. Yes. Never Why mind. are you scared? It's hurt. I, we're it's, trying to it's, invite them to It's his favorite thing to do <laughs> anyway. Um, but that does mean, then, that until then, we're, we're doing Holy Week and Easter a, a little bit differently. So obviously we're not going to do the regular gathering of, of collections for Easter flowers because they're not going to be a lot of flowers. We'll have everything will be beautiful up front so if you see it you know, on camera it'll look very festive but it's not the kind of flowers that we would normally have for the campus. Um, but what we will have is uh, we, one of the, the things that we do is to be able to memorialize people that we care about, that have passed on before us. It's such an important part. We're a resurrection people, and we know that we're bonded together with people who have gone on before us. And so we want to give people the opportunity to be able to, uh, to have their, their loved ones memorialized, to be prayed over um, for Easter. And so all you have to do is to, uh, is to write a little memo to us. You can send it by email or you can send it um, uh, with a note and just stick it in an envelope. You can send still a, a gift, a check, uh, that can go in the note um, with it and then we'll remember those names on Easter. And just a reminder so that the, the memorial gifts that come in those, those funds will go to support the ministry of the Altar Guild, which is where the money for the Easter flowers went. So for Christmas and Easter, that's always, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a vote of support for the work, the important work that the, uh, that the Altar Guild does. So Easter continues. We're a resurrection people. And so even though, you know, the world throws at us, you know, what it does, um, you know, we still gather, you know, we still celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. We still shine his light in this world. Yeah, the body of Christ doesn't just stop because uh, we, we can't meet inside buildings. So I think that, the, the, as we know, the, the Spirit is moving us into new places, into new landscapes, and how to explore all this. So finally, before we leave, uh, you hopefully received in the mail from Father Todd that letter. And in that letter, there was a communication survey to make sure that we have the correct information for you. We realize that not all of you are Facebook people, not all of you are website people or YouTube people, where we do put a lot of information out so but you hopefully are email people and so we want to make sure we have your correct email so please fill that out and let us know and you can also submit that information to Kara um, our office manager that's Kara at st. Mary's hyphen steward dot org how do you spell Kara Kara K-A-R-A for lots of us because we can when we can gather in person then uh, then email can feel kind of optional but at a time like this when we're when in order for us to stay in touch you know, that we need digital communication, then email becomes a requirement so that right. we can, we can yeah. really be able to send out to you notices of things that are coming up so we can stay in touch and so then you can respond to the news that's coming out or, or just be part of the regular worship offerings that we have. And we got to keep our feelers out too. If there's people that you know who do not use their email. You were talking to a person the other day who right. doesn't check 
busy email that much, right? right? So if you know those people, who those people are, for you to reach out to them or let us know, so we know to, to call them, to check in with them, because this is where the bodies got to take care of one another um, as the church. Those were the top three things, and then some, on this Corona special here with Father Todd. I'm sure you'll see this again soon at some point, getting our, our Padre here uh, on, on this video. And we will see you very soon, right here on the digital webs. God bless you, be good, and keep on washing those hands. God bless. Let's go get some chicken soup. Yeah, let's go. Hey, go All right, we're going to go get some chicken soup. Bye.